Okay, so my original video got botched with a really low sound quality. So what we're going to do is I'm going to redo this and you're going to see it what's well, going to show up in the PDF. So I'm going to show you how to calculate for a sweater This looks like this. Alright. And I'm going to move my way down here to the formula. Alright. So first off you need to do a swatch. And I did 20 stitches by 28 rows. And I got 5.5 .5 inches by 5 inches. Okay. And I used Premier Puzzles yarn and I used a 5 8 inch gauge flexi loom. But any 5 8 inch gauge, you'll still need to do a swatch because not all 5 8 inch gauges are uh, created equal. So you should do a swatch. It's important. Now, what you want to do is say you want to take and to figure out your stitches per inch because you got to figure it out. So let's say 20 divided by 5.5 is 3.6. That is your inches, stitches per inch. Okay? And your rows per inch are 28 divided by 5. It's 5.6. I round it up to 6. So, 3.5 stitches per inch, 6 rows per inch. Now, here's how this works. You need this information. This is important. Do your swatch. Back of sweater. This is where we start. Your chest circumference times stitches per inch equals total stitches. My suggestion is take your chest circumference add four to it so that it's not skin tight sweater. If you want a skin tight sweater, do the chest circumference as exact. The other thing you want to keep in mind, if you have hips that are bigger than your chest, what you're after is the biggest circumference. If your hip or waist or chest is bigger, choose that circumference and go from there. With children, I've noticed their chest is bigger than any other measurement and that's what I go for times stitches per inch equals your total stitches that you need for the whole body. But you only need to know the back of the sweater. So you need to take the total stitches and divide it by two and that gives you half the stitches you need. So that tells you how many stitches you actually need for just the back of the sweater. The shoulder to hip measurement times rows per inch. When it comes to the lengths of things, you never add four. You want it exactly what you want it. You decide how long you want this measurement, how long you want the sweater to be. Then you take that measurement and you multiply it by your rows per inch. This gives you the total number of rows you'll need to do for the back. Well, you want a rib stitch section. I chose three inches. If you want two, choose two. Decide how many inches you want to do for a rib stitch. However many inches you want to do, multiply that by your rows per inch. That gives you the total rows for a rib stitch. Take the total rows up here, minus the total rib stitch rows right here, and that equals your total rows in stockinette. So when you do it, you cast on, you do this many rows in rib stitch, and then you do this many rows in knit stitch. The front of the sweater isn't much different in that it's only half and you have to make two panels of back. So you have the total, half the stitches, go up here and find that, half the stitches, and divide that by two. That's the total stitches used for the front half, just a half of it. You'll need to make two of these. Then you do the total rows and rib stitch, and the, the rib stitch rows are the same and the stockinette rows are the same. Your rows are the same. The only thing you got to calculate for is half of what the back is so that you can make two to make a complete half. Your sleeves. The arm circumference needs to be added to four. Okay, so arm circumference plus four equals total inches. That's a circumference. It's a width. You don't want a skin tight, add four. If you want a skin tight, Keep it as is. 
You want to take your total inches and you want to multiply it by your stitches per inch. And that equals your total stitches that you'll need. Your arm length is not extended unless you want growing room for your children. Add a couple of inches. Times rows per inch. So your arm length in inches times rows per inch equals total rows. Total rows that you need for your arm. The rib stitch is the same number of rows from the body. So that's the same as up here, total rib stitch rows. So what you do is you take your total rows, which is right here, and you want to minus the rib stitch rows, which is up there, to get your total rows in stockinette. Which means you cast on, you do however many rows of rib stitch, and then whatever this number is of knit, stockinette. Your neck area is the more complicated and always is the more complicated area. First you want to take the neck circumference and add 4. It is a width. You do not want it skin tight. If you want it skin tight, keep it. But typically you want to add the 4 so that you can get it over the head, but this is not a big deal here. You can use this formula for a basic sweater and just do two back halves instead of one. And that makes a total sweater. Add 4 so it's not too tight around the neck. That's up to you. You can add 2, however much. That's your total inches. Total inches times your stitches per inch are the total stitches you need for your neck, which I'm doing a fold down neckline and rib stitch. Total stitches divided by 2 is half the stitches. Half the stitches divided by 2 equals the bind off stitches. That's how many you will bind off on the ends of your back and on your front. And then you leave the rest of the stitches to connect later to make a smooth neckline. Total length of your neckline, how long you want that collar to be. If you want it to fold down, if you don't want it to fold down, you decide the length you want in inches. Then you want to multiply it by your rows per inch. This is the total rows for the collar, however many rows you want. I'm doing mine in rib stitch so that it sucks to the neck nicely. Now, I'm going to give you an example of what I've done. Remember, stitches per inch is 3.5, rows per inch is 6. I'm using a bulky size 5 yarn. My chest circumference is 24 inches plus 4, which equals 28, and I round it up to 30. This is for a child. I want him to be able to grow into it some. So I've done this, but typically you wouldn't. Just stick with that. Arm length is 13. I added a little extra for his. But if you don't have a child, if you don't, have, if you're working as an adult, do it as your arm length. That way you don't have to worry about, you know. But if you're doing a grow in, add a couple inches, but not much. Arm length, arm width. This is where you do need to add four inches unless you want it skin tight. 7 plus 4, so he was 7 inches around, we added 4 to it to equal 11 inches. The body length was 18 inches. The neck was 11 plus 4, which is a total of 15 inches. These are your measurements, and these are your additions. Keep up with it. Alright? Body back. 30 times 3.5 is 105 total stitches needed for the body. 105 divided by 2 is 52.5, round down to 52. You want an even number to do your rib stitching, makes it easier. So, I round it down to 52 rather than rounding up to 53. That being said, 52 is how many stitches I will need. Now, my length was 18, and I'm multiplying that by my rows per inch, which is 6. I get 108 rows that I need total. Well, I want 3 inches in a rib stitch times 6, which is my rows per inch, equals 18. So I'm going to do 18 rows of a rib stitch. But how many rows of stockinette? You take your total stitches here, minus 18, and it equals 90 rows of stockinette, which is knit stitch. So cast on. Do 18 rows of a rib stitch and 90 rows of a stockinette stitch. The body front is 
not much different than the back. You take the 52 and you divide it by 2 to get 26. You're going to cast on 26 and do 18 rows of rib stitch and 90 rows of stock and hit. And you'll need to do two of those. Your sleeves was 11 times 3.5 equals 38.5 round up to 40. Now you can keep it and round it to 38 to try to keep it even because that is your width. Alright, so 40 stitches or 38 depending on what you want. Alright, now you're going to take 13 and times that by 6. That's your length of your arm times your rows per inch and you get 78 rows. 78 minus the 18 rows for rib stitch gives you 60 rows of stock in it. So what this means is you cast on 40 stitches, you do 18 rows of rib stitch and 60 rows of stock in it stitch. Your neck area. I had 15 and I multiplied that by the stitches per inch and got 52.5. 52.5 divided by 2 is 26.25. Round down to 26. 26 divided by 2 equals 13. 13 is the number of stitches you will bind off on the back ends. So you have like, say your square here, you're going to bind off on the shoulder areas. This is going to create your shoulder areas on your back. 7 times 6 equals 42. I wanted a 7 inch length neckline to fold down. And I'd multiply that by the rows per inch to give me 42 rows of rib stitch. Alright, so let's write this out. Written out. Sweater back, knitted flat. Cast on 52, rows 1 through 8, knit 2, purl 2. Row 19 through 105, knit. Row 106, here's where that bind off 13 comes in. And neck, see, 13. This is the part that's complicated. Bind off 13, knit 26, and bind off 13. You want to know where your bind off, what I usually do is count in 13, put a stitch marker, count in 13, do a stitch marker. That makes it easy. Then you can just write out whatever's in between. Alright, hold those stitches aside. If you're using the flexi loom, this is easy. You simply take the stitches that are already on there and put them aside. If you are working with, say, an X loom or a large afghan loom, then what you want to do is take those stitches off, put them on a stitch holder, and put those aside, and work your front halves. Cast on 26, rows 1 through 18, knit 2, purl 2. On your rib stitch, row 19 through 105, knit, then on one half, which is your right side, you're going to bind off 13 and then knit 13. You're going to do the same process up here for the other half, and then when you get to row 106, you're going to knit 13 and then bind off 13, and that gives you your left side. Hold those stitches aside, just like you did the back half, so that when you're ready, you can bind all the stitches together, lined up, making sure that there's a space for the front of the sweater because that's where you're adding your zipper but you're going to connect the sides of your neckline to the back and the front okay so you're going to put all those 52 pegs together that you've saved and you're going to do row 1 through 42 and knit 2 purl 2 and then you're going to bind off and that's your body okay but you'll need to show up sew up your shoulder area and under the sleeve and you can see that in the video. Now the sleeves knitted circularly if you have an adjustable loom. If you do not have an adjustable loom then knit flat and sew up. Cast on 40, row 1 through 18, knit 2 purl 2 and rows 19 through 78, knit. Bind off, make 2. See? front, let's see, sleeves, back, and there is the neckline connected 
Okay, you see I've connected the back and the front, and you'll see those little things sitting off the side. And there's my sleeves, I set them on last. So I explained the process, assembly. Sew shoulder seam together. So you want to sew this section together. This is where you bind it off 13. You want to sew that up first. Then you want to sew your sleeves on. Then you want to sew down through here. I have a separate video on how to sew up the zipper. Check it out. You will need several safety pins to put in a zipper. Okay? That is how you calculate how you the formula, how you calculate. You can make this in any size you want. When you get the PDF, that's what you get with it. And that's what it looked like finished and on. You can make this a non-zip up front sweater. You can just do two backs and you can um, connect and do a closed off. Okay? So this is easy to translate into just a regular sweater. Alright? So that is how you go in and you calculate and use the formula and how you work it out exactly. You can make this into any size you want. All you use is my formula and that's how you do it. Okay? I hope this was helpful and um, I'll be doing a more advanced one. Um, I'll be posting that soon, but this is your great beginner's formula for a basic square off sweater is what I'd call it because you're just making a bunch of squares to sew it together but you're doing it by sizing and measurements so that is how you do it